But thank you, Dylan, for coming here today. We've got Dylan Burke, ISK world champion, European champion, and English champion. Um, thank you for coming. No come right, just straight away from training. Still, yeah. still all kicked out. <laughs> um, we've got a lot of footage though at the training, so that will post out. That'd be good. Um, but your next fight, April the 9th. Yeah. Who are you fighting? John Ship Chase. And, she's and there's been a bit of back and forth, hasn't there? <laughs> on social yeah. media. What's that? What's that all about? Are you ready for it? Um, to be honest, like I don't know. Like I put up that I was coming for everyone at 59 to 57 kilos, like my new category that I'm going to be fighting at. And um, I don't know, I've got to be under his bonnet. <laughs> so, so you came in, called everyone out yeah. after a big break, and then you've yeah, ruffled some feathers. <laughs> um, to be fair, he's a good opponent, strong opponent. He's been around for years. Um, it's a good test for me, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we'll see you April 9th. You confident enough to make a prediction for us? Or? April, I'll win. Yeah, you'll win. I'll win. Yeah, you're a cut. <laughs> um, it could be a good scrap. Yeah. He's forward, he's aggressive fighter, like myself, so pretty sure we're going to clash and um, predict a good tear up. Yeah, and yeah. your training for this has been intense. Like, like, I was just literally, um, you, we were saying before, you're doing two, time, two, three times a day? Two times a day, minimum, six days a week. Um, Tuesdays are three times, Thursdays are two, three times. So really take a guy 100%. Yeah, 100%. On you're not, not um, going to have any excuses, Con. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right, so this is your first fight since what, November? From November, November yeah. yeah. Since the... And you had a big break before that. So are you feeling like mentally fit as well as... Yeah, do you know yeah. what? Like At the moment, I'm like, where, where like I had a break? And the break kind of makes you a bit more hungry. Cause like when I was younger, like I have like fights after fights after fights, you kind of lose motivation. So like the breaks made me hungry and like obviously people were still fighting, people were still competing. So it was like made me hungry to get back in the ranking, get back in the mix. Really had it in yeah. your head. Like yeah. And how did your, winning that world championship in November, did that change your mindset at all? Did you, a lot of athletes talk about once they hit that world champion, they kind of don't have, places to go where they kind of lose like they're at the top they can only go down as opposed yeah. to being like the come up artist how how did it affect you, in, you know, and what did that like, about your future how was that pushing you forward for like so for instance for that fight like I'm more like more focused on the opponents I beat more than like oh uh, this world title and like who I've beat for it okay. I'd rather have like I'd rather go fight a top opponent like maybe better so that better person than I fought for the world title, I'd get like more out of that than fighting. So I'm more hungry to like make a dent on bigger names higher in the sport. Yeah, it's higher caliber fights. Just show yeah, just, belt kind yeah. Of obviously it's nice. Um, my dad likes him in his house. Yes. It's nice decoration at his house. But um, yeah, for me mentally, like that's what I aim for. Like I look at fighters like that are ranked like high in the WBC like one championship fighters and I think like yeah I could beat them I want to fight them like they're the names I want to be beating so is that the next step for you then you want to go to like one championship one championship you want to be? yeah and what weight would you like to be looking at there um to uh, walk around like 59 kilos is like top end that I'd fight at so I've, I'll make the 57 kilogram like category because like I don't sauna I don't don't have to cut weight I only started dieting this week oh so it's not that like intense you see some mm. boxers like Literally look like skin and bones by the end. I was literally eating Nando's last week. <laughs> right, it's all right. So you're easing in steadily. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too, too drastic. And what's the what's the competition like at then at 59? Um, 59 in like UK. Um, yeah, UK and globally. UK is a better category. Like 57 is quite like quite open. Um, also, I've got like teammates that are like 57, like Reese Thompson. Okay. So he fights like top end. Um, he's fighting for the number one spot at 57. So. Where can I really go if he wins that fight? Like I can't really fight my yeah. fight him. So like I'm comfortable enough to fight fifty nine. It's bigger people, but like it's more of a challenge, I believe. And what's the politics then of all the different? Like, you, you say your teammates and you you train across a couple of gyms. So how does yeah. all the politics of that work? For so someone who's outside of like, yeah, the yeah. fighting. So like, so I trained at Kettles originally since a child. Um, I moved up to like. Crawley ways um, when I was going to school so like it was too far for me to go back and forth yeah. obviously like I was loyal to Kettles and Kettles have got me to like I wouldn't be in the same position I am now without Kettles but um, it was too far for my dad so to do the travelling so I used to go to Crawley just to keep up with my training and, and like I've took them up um, as like a 50-50 gym so like, I'll do half my gym training at Crawley half my gym training at Kettles 
which like both have propelled me to like where I am now and the fight like the fighter I am now. Does that balance in having two gyms, like two different sets of trainers, you've got two sets of like all the facilities and that, does it help you keep it fresh rather than the same place yeah. every day in and out, drag it like, um, through? Yeah, and also like other f- f- like the fighters that I'm around, like they have different um different styles. So like Lupini's like a really technical gym, like if you look at like Reese Thompson and George um, George Jarvis are really technical fighters where like Kettles might be like a bit more aggressive um, but both of them help me in t- completely different ways um, yeah so yeah, and like the training is like completely different as well like at Kettles I'm training with like Joe Ritterjack it's like Thai style and stuff then I'll train with like Paolo at Lupini and um, they've got bo- both like really different styles but they both like combined make me as a fighter. Yeah. So the balance it, it balances out nicely. Yeah. And how long have you been fighting then? So like, what was your childhood? Was it all about the fighting? Uh, I was a footballer at, yeah. when I was a child. Uh, goalkeeper. Turned out I was too short when I got to eleven side goals. Got good with your hands. <laughs> good with my hands. And then mainly fighting was like for me to keep fit because I used to be quite fat as a child. Really? You know, yeah, I was saying, you wouldn't think it looking into that, would you? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was quite fat and then like I was brought up like Croydon so my dad wanted me to be able to defend myself and stuff. So it was mainly just a hobby yeah. and like to be honest, I used to hate it. Like fight, like going training and that, it used to be like a chore. My dad used to like, not like force me to go but like, oh like come on, do something, get out of the house. Like he didn't want me to be like stuck behind a computer constantly. Yeah. So, like, I used to do it, and then, like, it got, to, I'd say, like, 15, 16, that kind of, like, clicked for me. Like, I was a bit more hungry for training. Like, I wanted to fight. Like, I remember my first fight when I was a kid. It was, like, 65 kilos or something. <laughs> already heavier than you are now. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's that how big I was. Yeah. And um, so then, like, my dad's, my dad kept on pushing me. Then, obviously, I wanted to train. Yeah. So then, like, I was able to pick up my training. My dad's always been, like, really supportive of my training. Like, if if I told him I wanted to train five times in a day, like, he would take me to all them training sessions. He used to beat you at the edge of the ring, like, sort yeah, today. We just, saw, like, <laughs> just saw your old man outside, like, watching every move he was doing. Like, really, <laughs> like, even run that to get your stuff. That was, like, probably support dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you drove down to yourself. So it wasn't even, like, he was doing it for the lift. It was like, he, lives, pure, he lives 50 minutes away. Yeah, just, like, pure support. Yeah. Of, like, and that's really good to see. Yeah. And is that... That family you so what was your family unit growing up and has that impacted you a lot then? The so my well parents are both like they were like split up so like um, originally I used to live with my mom yeah and then like um, I was going like downhill like with my like school and stuff so like I moved in with my dad. Was that just for the discipline then? Of, like, discipline because my dad's a bit more yeah. stricter. <laughs> like, yeah. I used to run laps around my mom like my dad like. Go get grounded for like three months and that at a time. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, dads are more. They don't care as much, do they? Mate, it's like ridiculous. Yeah. Like I get like a detention from school. We'd be like three months grounded. Like what? Like it don't even mix. Yeah. Like so strict. So so yeah, he got me into school because I used to be really like quite intelligent and stuff, and um, got me into like I got my A levels up there and stuff, and um, yeah. So then I kind of lived with my dad, and then like it was like I come back to like Croydon in that way because like that's where my friends, that's where I was brought up and stuff. So. Yeah. That was like my 50 50. So I used to like, then I used to share in like, so I'd stay at my dad's for like school, go back to my mum's house for like um, my friends and that. And then, yeah, that's so, all. And what like, were your friends that were growing up? Were a lot of them involved in um, like fighting martial arts stuff like that? Or? Do you know what? Like, I've met friends within the gym now. Like, so like people that I've met through the gym that I'm yeah. friends, but not like my outside your friends. friends. Yeah, yeah, my home friends. None of them was like fighters or anything. Um, it's just the only fighters I've got as friends is from made in the gym. And did you ever have that reputation as like when you're in school? Oh, he does he does the Muay Thai. He's like, like <laughs> pick on him. Did you ever get that kind of not really people try and pro- prove a point because they know you're off? Like, not really. Do you know like for me like I kind of like I know I can fight. Like I train every day, like yeah. twice a day. I know I, I ain't got a point to prove. Like did so when it comes to stick it on you though to prove a point. Not really. Like, no. like the school I went to is like a really good school. Like okay. so like it was quite posh. So not typical it, Croydon, then. yeah, not typical Croydon. <laughs> so like, cause no really fights. Like yeah. fights were unheard of in my school. Oh, okay. So it was more. So it was never about like the street fighting or anything. Like, cause you know a lot no. of kids get bullied and then they, yeah. like that's why they go into. It. But for you, it was more about like the discipline. Like, discipline. My dad just wanted me to like 
No, I don't. My hands up, really. Yeah. Well. yeah. Oh, hey, that's interesting. And what, when you got that bug, how did it change your life, like, from wanting to see your friends doing that to, like, strictly just... Did you lose friends because you were like, I'm dedicated to this now? Not that I lose friends, but I lose, like, a lot of, like... I have to make a lot of sacrifices. So, like, when my friends are partying every weekend, like, Friday nights, I do 10 more runs. Yeah. When my friends might be down the pub or going out for food or, like, my friends will invite me for food. I'll be like, I can't eat there, like... So I'm cutting weight healthy, do you know yeah. what I mean like so it hasn't like sacrificed like it hasn't like made the impact on my friends my friendship circles but it's just like I've got different priorities yeah. and, like my friends come and support me like I've got a good like friendship base like I have loads of people that come and support my fights and they yeah. understand like what I have why, to do why yeah. you're giving up yeah. Is, like, yeah all that time and so because you you're only 23 now and you yeah. was you was you English champion at like 19 Bit younger than that, I think I was about 17. So that's a young age when that that's really when your friends start like it's kind of a make or break age, and yeah. Your friends are going out and you're doing it, whatever, as opposed to just focusing on their gym, yeah. So, did you was that difficult then? Do you know what? I've never been a type to like drink, like my first alcoholic drink was on my 18th birthday, oh, okay. um, which I didn't like. Um, I'm a really fussy, I'm a really fussy drinker, so yeah. if I don't like the taste of something, I'd never yeah. do it. And uh, also for me, like I've got an addictive personality. So like, I never wanted to be around like the crowd or like taking drugs or smoking. Cause I know like I'd be addicted to it like straight away. Straight yeah. away. So like, that's why I kind of stayed away from that scene. Plus I don't like, I don't get a buzz from going clubbing. Nah. Clubbing, like drinking, I don't get a buzz. That's not my buzz. My buzz is like getting my hand raised in the ring. Yeah, that channeling that. Because a lot of it is just boredom, isn't it? So like yeah. having something that focuses your mind and mo- keeps you motivated every day. I haven't got time for anything else. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. the time Friday night comes, I want to go sleep, and then I'm up at five a.m. running. So I haven't got time to do that. Like I have one day off a week. Yeah. And what what day is that? Then what do you do on your day off? Like when you can just kick back and. Well, my day I say it's a day off, but I spar in the morning and then oh. <laughs> I have the afternoon off. Is that Sunday? Is it? Sunday, yeah. And how does that? How does that training fit in? Like, well, first that must cost a fortune training like two or three times a day. How do you, how do you afford that? Is that all sponsorships? So, sponsorship. So like I have, I don't know. How, so each camp I have around like six to eight sponsors yeah. that will like I'll like tally up how much my training is going to cost me for that camp, and obviously I'll advertise their companies etc. And then I'll divide that between all the companies, and they'll they'll happily like fund my training and stuff right and then what are the fight purses like if you don't mind the saying because it's kind of like it's not really an area that's spoken about a lot um so you know like it varies with like obviously like where you're fighting uh what what shows you're fighting on like obviously like one championship like if you saw you saw the other day jonathan yeah, exactly. jonathan got 50 grand yeah, bonus 50 straight away, isn't it? and Win. yeah no um just a bonus oh, is it, yeah. and then like you get a fight purse just for the fight which I don't know exactly, but yeah. I know it's like over 10,000. But then like some shows can pay as little as like 500. Oh, really? And then like, like yeah, it's like, it, it's a massive like variant of like where where it goes. So it's a lot, but you have to rely quite a lot on the sponsorships. On the sponsorships, otherwise it wouldn't happen. Yeah. Like you couldn't just dedicate, unless you're like at the top one championship, then you can kind of um, rely just on your fight purse. But other than that is that where you see yourself going to then one yeah. championship is that the that the target that's the target and what if you what target have you set yourself for that is there like a time or like a number of fights you want to get through before you're do you know like in there so obviously i had a long breakout like yeah. two and a half years i've had one fight since back and um, obviously i'm fighting april um i want to realistically want to be aiming like three four fights at like high level um high level opponents and then I want to be challenging myself because like one championship you'll see like every fight you're fighting is like all high caliber fighters yeah. that are like really like you don't get any you don't get a walk in the park yeah so like I want to be active um fighting at that level um hopefully be able to fight someone that's in one championship off off of one championship at a show yeah. and like kind of like see the level that they're at yeah, and you can kind of get that feel of yeah the feel of the fighters. So do you know Jonathan Haggerty then? Do you yeah like, yeah. Does he because he trains at Kettles as well? Is that yeah right? yeah. So do you spar with him and then and work with him? Do you know I've sparred him at Nolsey's. He doesn't really spar at um, Kettles because oh, he's right. 
same as me, like 50 50, like Nosey's, Kettles. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have spied him. Like, we've you know, we trained probably, we were training together when we was like 10 years old. I've got oh, pictures exactly. of us, like, exactly. about that big. <laughs> um, and obviously, during my time, like, when I was a child, like, I used to have ups and downs. Like, he stood at, stood at it, like, he continued training. Like, when, like, yeah. When I used to like repel with my dad, like I don't want to go training, like I used to have like breaks off and stuff like that. But um, like he shows like the dedication that he's had since a young age, it's got him to where he is at now. But again, that's another example of like the dad's being so supportive. Yeah, his dad's like highly supportive. Yeah. He used to drive him because obviously he used to be, he lives like Bermondsey yeah, way. Like Wolf yeah, like so his dad used to drive him down there like Tuesdays and Thursdays. Every Tuesday and Thursday we'd be training in the class together. And obviously it's like the same commitment, like he has that supportive family, yeah. dad that pushes him, you'll see his dad in his, all of his corners fighting. Um, so it's, it's a massive boost when you've got like a supportive family. Yeah. And so you, you weren't always the best behaved boy, was you? <laughs> um, and how do you, well obviously like, we'll be a bit open about it, like when you went to prison, like, what, was, how, what happened there? So um, all I'd say is that like, when I went to prison, yeah. it's like rock like, wrong crowd being around the wrong crowd they've like tarnished me with the same brush uh currently trying to appeal my conviction because we don't believe i'm still trying to fight my innocence oh, over are. the conviction yeah okay so what what happened there if we can edit anything out you don't want to, like <laughs> what um what how were you stitched up then kind of uh so i obviously had like groups of friends i was from credit area where like people yeah. uh, people into certain things i was around the crowd and like basically they said that where well, I, I was like really good friends with like certain people yeah so um so like when they're up to no good it also makes you look like you're up to no good yeah and um that's kind of how i like got pulled into a case that really had, had nothing, to, nothing do to do with me like even like during like my trial and stuff they like they was they know that like I used to train a lot. It was mainly like my phone like communication with people that like tied me into stuff. Yeah. Um, but like that's why I feel like it's wrong. Like because where where like I have different sacrifices. Like I can't go out. Like I don't go out. I can't go out for food. I'm not out partying on the weekends. Like a lot of my friendships like get like I talk to them on the phone and stuff. Yeah. So it's not something that we're like oh we're going out. We're going to this club this weekend. You I can't, like, yeah, I can't yeah, go. Just... Like, it's not something that I do. So I, I talk to my friends like quite often, and like fighting is like a lone, like lonely sport. You're like, in there on your own. Aren't you're you? in there on your own. Like I'm doing fo- like five thirty a.m. I'm running by myself. Then I'm coming back, feet like eating. Then I'm driving to training by myself. I'm training. Then I'm trying home by myself. Like there's no one that's like carrying you to go do all these things. So calling your friends like it's like the way that you're keeping like keep in contact with your friends and stuff and did that affect you obviously it affected your career in terms of yeah. like fighting you had to have time off and stuff but the only thing that helped me was covid because obviously yeah. the time that i was away covid kicked in so not everyone else was training and fighting yeah their gym was shut yeah it's the same as you didn't have access yeah and were you were you on like the 23 hour bang up then like because uh, during covid they they really restricted it all didn't they so yeah when i was when I first went away, I was in Beaker, I think, an hour and a half, you get out a day, so it was 22 and a half hours. Then I went to a Seeker, which was, if you had a job, I think he was out like eight hours a day. Okay. Um, obviously then COVID kicked in, and then like they split the wing, so like a wing would be like two floors, and then like either side of the wing, so they would make a quarter of the wing come out at a time. Yeah. So like you're not cost contaminating the other people. Um I think that was like half hour a day. Yeah, well, that's, it's not a lot, is it? And then like it got up to like towards the end of my sentence, it was like two hours a day that you would get with half the wing. But then like by then I was in a single cell, so like you're with yourself for twenty two hours of the day. Uh, yeah. yeah. How, um did you try and keep fit in there and stuff like that? So you didn't really have a lot of room but did you work out in your cell now? Yeah, I had all like all the burpee records in every prison I went to. Really? Yeah, running records. Really <laughs> um, that's the only thing you can really do. You're not allowed to like, because I was away with people that like done boxing and stuff like that. So we used to like try and make hand mitts and we'd have to like hide in the showers and like do like pads and stuff. It's never going to end well. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but yeah the screws like obviously never like let you um let you do that because obviously yeah. you're training to fight and like they don't yeah they don't, think you're a lot more nefarious yeah. than it's just you're trying to keep active yeah yeah, yeah yeah but we used to literally make them out like you used to get like these flip flops, like off the canteen for like two pounds. Yeah. We used to try and make pads out of them and like hide in the showers and like do pads without them seeing us. So was that obviously? Did you add? Did you? Add, you said you put a lot of weight. Yeah. Was that just from the food, or was that muscle that you like bulked up? Um, I feel like I've put on like a lot like fat, but it was also like muscle because obviously, um, do like a lot of press ups and obviously it's like a lot that you're sitting around. Yeah. So like your cells like no bigger than this room that we're in now, probably a bit smaller. You got your bed in there, yeah. Your furniture for like hang up your clothes, TV, like every sink, toilet, and so it's hard to like do anything else. Like you can't run, yeah. So it's like just like press ups, sit ups. You could do pull ups off like a bar, like you can make something. Do pull ups. So like, I put on a bit of muscle, but mainly just sitting around eating shit. Yeah, you can. Mm. Yeah, you don't have that. You don't have access to anything, do you? Like the normal stuff you'd be doing. Mackerel and then like food as well, yeah, like mackerel rice. Not, yeah. yeah, you're not managing that. You're not checking your macros or checking that. Like, it's not a good, clean, cooked food, is it? No, nah. well, you're cooking a kettle. Yeah, exactly. You're not. You're just like, making it up as you go along. And when you came out... Yeah. Oh, no, so actually, before... Do you think that if you hadn't had that discipline with your like parents and with the fight in itself, do you reckon you would have gone off the rails and... like? been actually involved in all that stuff do you reckon that would have do you know what like see where i've trained for like so much is like a part of my life now yeah so when i was like away like it was like i was so hungry to go back to training like i was like every day i used to think about training and that and That's like what you miss most. yeah like i'd shadow box every day like and i couldn't wait to like hit pads and like see if i still got it like that was the main thing like i even had uh george jarvis come to the gates yeah. with pads and I've, I've actually got a video of me hitting pads outside the jail just really trying yeah. to get <laughs> any time you can and with was it the big was it a big shock then coming back out but how long did you serve i done um i got three year ten three years ten month sentence obviously do half of that and then i come four and a half months early on tag um so i don't know but I think it's about worked out about nineteen months, twenty oh, okay. months. So, yeah. So for a year and a half. Yeah. And coming back, obviously, it was still in the middle of COVID, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, just coming like, out, yeah, like we was like, just about we was allowed in the gyms then. Oh, okay. So I was in the gym. First day I come out, I think what did I do? Went, had some food, like craving yeah, food. food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, proper food made me feel sick. Um, then, yeah, so I just spent time with my missus. Um, how, then, how's that, how long have you been with missus? Uh, do you know what? Like, I couldn't really count it. Like, maybe like three, four years. Like, but we had like a massive talking stage. So like, before like before I went away, we was probably talking for like three years, four oh, okay, years, right, and then yeah, like yeah. we got together and like, so it's like probably a lot of years. And has that consistency helped you as well then? Like, yeah. So like, it's so constant, constant support. Yeah. Like, if I need like, even when I was away, like if I needed like paperwork done. Or like this centre slizzard, like bam, she's on it, like she yeah. does it, and like even now, like my training, I'll ring her. I'll, I'm on the way home. Could you cook me some salmon and rice? Time and buying salmon and rice is cooked. Yeah. So that's that. Uh, yeah, that extra support. That yeah. Helps, isn't it? Like having a strong woman behind you is like every every strong man, isn't it? <laughs> um, and what was school like for you? Did you get on? You said you was like you moved around between. Were you yeah. in the same school the whole time? No, so originally I went to primary school in New Addington in Croydon. Um, then I went to high school in New Addington for year seven and eight. By then, like, I was going off the rails. Yeah. My dad was like, listen, he's coming with me. Because, um, like, my mum couldn't, like, control me. Like, I was going, like, getting kicked out of school. But, like, the school didn't want to kick me out because, like, I was naturally, like, quite intelligent. Yeah. And obviously, like, there's... There's kids who are just like a little bit wild and they're like maybe not tamed, but like then there's actual wrong ones and like yeah. you're obviously not a wrong one. No, 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 like no, no. That diamond in the rough. Like, yeah. Teachers love that. Don't you? Yeah. They like, don't want to tell you off, but they kind of have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Mainly for me, it was like I used to find the work too easy, so I used yeah. to like mess about. Yeah. And then like, cause with the school I went to, it was like, it's not the best. So like, I was seen as like really smart, but like the the level of work and stuff in the school was like really easy. Like, yeah. So it wasn't pushing you. So it wasn't pushing me, so I was just yeah. like bored constantly. 
So like I felt like I was just messing about. Plus like you're around like children that are naughty are. Um, so like it kind of pulls you off the rails. Um, but then like it put me in like the right direction. Like I moved in with my dad, went to a good school where like being naughty is not cool. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like when I was in the old school, like being naughty is cool. Like yeah. it's funny. Like being a class clown is funny. Like there it's not cool. Like they want good grades. Like being in all the top sets, that's like the best. That's the, the, that's the, that's yeah. the cool thing. And did you think that one did going to a new school like throw you a little bit? Did that, or was it like the shake up you needed? Um, do you know what? Like it threw me a little bit. Like my grammar was completely different when I went down there. Um, it's com- like completely different children that I was like around and stuff, and like it was mad like to see like the hobbies like other people had. Like, you wouldn't hear it. Like, in my school, there was, like, gardening club. Like, in my old school in Croydon, gardening club. Yeah, but no one. <laughs> yeah. So, but the two worlds, then, has that given you quite a good perspective? On yeah, because obviously now I've got friends from, like, both worlds as well. So, yeah. like, I kind of mix between the both. And, um, yeah, you've got, like, that's why I've got, like, a big friendship group. And, like, it's, like, good to have friends in, like, all different sectors of life. Like, yeah. I've got accountants, got bankers, got... Dodgy people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. You get all sorts. Um, yeah. And have you, have you travelled a lot with the fighting? Yeah, so I thought, um, I've gone with Paolo to, where have I gone? Portugal, Spain, fought in Thailand. Uh, quite recently I got offered a fight in Dubai. Couldn't go because of uh, my bell conditions. Um, where else have I got? What was Thailand like? Because it's different. It's obviously, that's oh. like the home of it. So actually, I was Jonathan's dad on my corner. He was oh, out there. Jonathan flew back early. So I landed there because I like, see like when I'm in camp, like I, I'm like tunnel vision. So like I, I go to Thailand by myself. Like whereas I've gone there quite a lot of times, so I've got like friends out there and stuff. Yeah. So I'll fly out there by myself and I'm like tunnel vision, just like in training and stuff. So I went out there. Um, I think I landed there on like, Tuesday, I want to say, or maybe a Monday, went to training on a Tuesday. So I've hit pads, we're at the same gym as Jonathan. Jonathan's dad brought a couple of fighters from his gym because he owns a gym, Team yeah. Underground. Um, so then I've hit pads, then they've offered me a fight on the Friday. Yeah, so, <laughs> so they've offered me a fight on the Friday, I've gone like, you know what, like, go on, we'll take it because um, he had a few fighters that was fighting on the same day. Okay. So, like, there's going to be a few of us. So I said, yeah, go on, I'll fight him. Add to the card, kind of. Yeah, thing. add to the card. Anyways, like, a French guy was like, the posters have come out because they, like, print posters, like, straight away. It's all over the place. Like, they've got, like, um, cars with, like, banners over them and stuff. Because they, like, yeah, yeah. Like, it's different. Like, yeah, they love it's, it, yeah, it's such a laid back sport, though. Yeah. Like, I, see, like, it's not a big build up. Like, they'll fight every week, two weeks, three weeks. Like, it's so consistent there. So, yeah. like, it's not a massive build up. And then, um, yeah, I fought a one. Was uh, it a different f- thrill, like, fighting out there as you get to Do you know what, like, my nerves weren't, like... Because, like, everyone gets nervous to a certain extent, but um, my nerves, like, I didn't have no nerves because it's so relaxed there. Like, me and the person I'm fighting are, like, mine and your sort of distance. We're getting massaged together. Yeah. Then when we're going out to fight, we're literally sitting next to each other before we're about to walk out to fight each other. Yeah, like, it's, it's not crazy. like a whole, like... Yeah. The animosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the big fights. And oh. when... Oh, go on, sorry, Carol. Got, no, go on. I was saying, how big was the crowds out there then? Uh, crowds... I could, it's hard to, like, hard to say, like... Weren't, like, massive. Weren't, like, massive, because I thought, like, on an island, like, when you go to, like, the main stadiums, like, um, Raja, Lupini and stuff, like, they're a bit more Channel 7. They're, like... They're not, ma- like, big, but they're, like, really compacted. Right. And like it's a good atmosphere because they go like really tall, so like the rings there and there's like, like really like, down, yeah, a lot yeah. of people like looking down. Um, I could I couldn't put a number on how much was in the crowd, but what has been your biggest crowd? Biggest crowd, mm, it's hard to say as well. Like I thought at the Indigo O2 when I was like 15, 16. Oh wow! Yeah, I think that holds a couple thousand. Yeah. Um, my main shows are like. I've because Crawley, they have their own home show. So obviously, where like I'm at that gym, I fight from that gym. I'm mainly fighting their home shows because right. it's like they can put it on themselves. Yeah, put it on and like Paolo and that will give me the fights I want. Like so, like some promoters won't want to maybe not want to spend the money on a certain opponent 
because like it's not financially like feasible for them like feasible for them like they'd rather cut corners get me a cheaper opponent yeah. put it but Paolo would actually put the extra mile when get me a decent opponent because you want the high caliber higher caliber like, yeah better, don't you? yeah um and what's the skill like what has fighting taught you that you don't use inside the ring like like lessons that you've learned from fighting that you can take out to the rest of your life uh discipline like i've got like crazy mind like mindset to like i'm like I'm really competitive as well see like running times like someone messaged me saying about beating a 7k in like sub 25 minutes and like i had to go beat it yeah like so i've got that really good determination it's like even like for instance when i was in the prison um burpees like burpee records i'd go like i'd find out who's got the burpee record and have to beat it yeah. so like that Thank determination you. and like i can't give up um that also like carrying yourself like i think that goes a long way like i like when i go out like when i rarely go out like i don't want to go out and have fights like that don't interest me but like, i find like the people that can't fight the ones that want to fight and yeah, prove you, themselves yeah you know <laughs> you can fight you don't need to tell anyone in any restaurant how you yeah. can fight can you yeah, yeah. so it's, yeah it's all really supposed like loud like loud mm. people who want to fight but they're the ones but also like, like it's like um like staying away from like drinks out like drugs like i've I've actually like honestly never taken a drug, never smoked a fag, nothing like I've been like teetotal my whole yeah. life. But um, so that's that like training and like fighting that's like made me like stay away from that because I wouldn't want to damage my like your health, your yeah, body, my health, yeah. my body, and also I know like I've got addictive personality, so yeah, it's a secret side. <laughs> yeah, and um, when you do train. Is there anything that's like you get really tempted by? Like we were talking earlier about your cheat meals and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there anything you're like, I can't do without, no matter how much weight I've got to lose, like I need this in my life? So, you know what? Um, my my missus hates me for it, yeah, but I have to get rid of all the chocolate. All right. All the chocolate, all the sweets, has to leave the house. If she buys something, I throw it away. Because once it goes in the bin, I've got to take it out of the bin, yeah. like a tramp. Like. <laughs> as soon as she comes, like, I proper crave it. But, like, I will go without it. Like I won't go to the shop and like cheat and like grab a chocolate. But if it's in my cupboard, I'm gonna. Like, <laughs> yeah. And that mo- mm. um, yeah, because that's sometimes the hardest bit when you've got things like there. When you take yourself out, of the yeah, yeah. And it's a lot easier to avoid. Mate, I've even like got to the point sometimes that like, like I've got to cut weight, but like there's some that like, she's cooked a meal or something, or like she's got like something that I want to eat, and I'll actually just. Put it in my mouth just to taste it and spit it out. <laughs> like, just to get the flavour yeah. in there, yeah. Because you can't take it in. Yeah, no calories, no flavour, is there? Um, what keeps you going then? Like, those days where you just can't be asked to get up and, like... Because you, I've obviously got your Instagram yeah. and you're up early every day. Yeah. Like, it's always dark when you're first out. So, how does that... Yeah, what makes you get up? Because, obviously, some days it's shit, isn't it? Some days yeah. it's rainy, it's dark outside, you don't want to go... Do you know, like, as well, like, I go through like people think like your training goes like up slope it's like it's up and down like some days you feel great some days you feel shit like it's a constant but it's uphill like you go you're going in the right direction but up and down but mainly for me it's like I think like my opponent if I if I if I don't run today it makes me easier for my opponent to beat me yeah, cause they're, gonna do, they're, they're, going, they're running yeah. like everything I picture like if I miss that my opponent's training now so I can't I can't skip training. I can't, I like, have to train. Keeps you accountable, yeah. doesn't it? Like, yeah. having someone who's going to punch you in the face, then it keeps you a lot more accountable. <laughs> yeah. Then, like, your, like, then your personal, just like... Also, like, like I, I, I don't mind losing a fight because I'm the worst fighter on the day, but losing a fight on, like, based on what I've done outside the ring, like, my fitness, not kind of weight, like, doing it the wrong way, that's, that's something that would, like, it always pressures me to like I have to be on point with everything that I do like yeah because then it becomes like a victory that you've lost rather than like rather than someone just being better than you yeah you're with Aston, wouldn't it? Like, what was your first taste of defeat like how did that affect you um so my first so my first fight professional like pro fight so a class five threes I fought Brit like Steve Irvine is really good opponent yeah. from Scotland um for a WBC English title for my first fight, I think he had like quite a few A class fights. Like on paperwork, it was like um, 
How did you get in that position then to be fighting for a belt on your first pro? Paolo. Oh, so right. Paolo, like like I said, like Paolo will give me the fights I want, um, and he'll make make things happen for me. Like first pro fight, I shouldn't be fighting for a WBC, but um, yeah, I fought Stevie. Um, he won on a split decision. Um, really 50-50 fight. Like I believe I nicked it, done enough to nick it. Obviously, he believes he'd done enough and could have gone either way. Um, when I spoke to the judges, they said they had it even up to the fifth round. He cut me in the fifth. Oh, so they had like pain. Yeah. Approach. It kind of tip the balance. In yeah, favor, yeah, but I've got lined up a fight with him like four years later, five years later. Um, we're fighting, I think, June 25th okay. this year. So, um, Revenge. yeah. But um, where where I didn't like, oh, I ain't gone into a fight and like lost like, I give 100% in the fight. It was a close fight. Like, I could still hold my head up high. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, that was my first taste of defeat. Um, and I st- still feel like, um, I still proud of that fight because it was a great fight, fight of the night. Um, if I like lost a fight due to like me not performing or like me being unfit, then like it would affect me a lot, lot worse. You know what I mean? Yeah, because then it's you, yeah, it's like your fault. But like I fought a top opponent at a high like high class, high right? class opponent, and gave him a good fight. And you've got what was your record on it? Seven and two. Seven and two, yeah. What was your other defeat? Defeat was um I fought in Spain. Um, against a really good Spanish, um, what his name? I think it's Martin. Some I've got him on Instagram to be fair. Um, Martin. Um, probably trying to forget it. Aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> no, to be fair, I'd, I'd fight him again. I'd want to fight him again, but um, I think he fights too small now, too big for him. Um, I was meant to fight Sandro Martin that I beat for the European title on the same night. He took the fight. Um, he's had a lot of fights in Thailand. Um, so you know what? Like that one, I just didn't perform in a day. Um, I'm not gonna make excuses, but I was. I had food. Um, I had food on the day that made me sick. I was throwing up. That stuff before the yeah. fight. But I'm not gonna say that's an excuse. I still got in the ring. He beat me on the day. Like fair enough. Like he beat me. But um, yeah, uh, that was my second second loss. Um, but yeah, no fucking. I'd I'd happily fight him again. I wanted to um wanted to fight him again. Paolo was like, like have a f- couple more fights, cause like when I watched the fight back, I was just doing like stupid things. Like I worked myself. Like he was blocking my left like low kicks. I'm carry on low kicking him, and he's blocking him. Like weren't trying to fake switch. Like it's in the wrong frame of mind. Yeah, wrong frame of the mind. And also where I think like I was a bit. I don't know if I was nervous. Um, that was my first away fight. Okay, so, so it's like first one is yeah well. so i don't know if like it was the nerves that was making me feel sick but i think like in my head i didn't feel 100 percent. so then like mentally like if you're not 100 percent up there when you get in the ring you're going to be like 50 percent like yeah. straight away and i think it took a toll on the fight like still great fight went the distance um give as good as i got uh, but he was just a better man on the night and what did you learn from that then? Do you, you learn to just make sure there's no excuses? In the like, yeah, no excuses. Like, from in, from now, I cook my own food. Like, after my weigh-ins, all the way up to, like, all my fight camp, I'll cook my own food. Yeah. Um, after post-weigh-in, post weigh I'll cook my own food. Even if I fought away, I'll do the same um, to avoid that. Um, also, I didn't manage my weight great against him. Um, I didn't take into account uh, um, in consideration of like the flying makes you hold water so when I was I think I left the day before was it day before maybe two days before I was three kilos over but then when I got to Spain uh, where I've been on the flight my body held water so I couldn't get it off and I had to fucking like proper stress my body right. to make the weight so then you're not yeah your body's not right yeah. your head's not right it's and it's like different out there, like their weighing was like 7 p.m. at like night. And then I had the fight at like, so it's only like 24 hours when I'm usually away in from 12 till two and they'll be fighting 10 o'clock the next night. So you've got that bit longer. To yeah, recover. a bit longer. And those few hours really make a difference, don't they? Yeah. Like getting hydrated again and getting fit. Especially then when I was fighting at like 55 kilos, I'd take two hours just to just get water in my body. Yeah. 
where I've like drained everything out. Like I can't eat. Like my main focus is just hydrating, hydrating myself. Because if you rush it, you'll be sick. Because as much as the training that takes out a lot of your day, like the recovery yeah. almost takes just as long, doesn't it? You're going for a yeah. sports massage after this. And what yeah. else do you have to do to recover then? Because you're putting your body under like enormous strain every day. So I'll get three sports massages a week um, just to keep my body um, going. Like Obviously, you always get like little nips, like my shoulder at the moment, so in my left shoulder where I've been left hooking a lot. Yeah. Um, so then like you always have to like fix problems um my strength and conditioning place i go to like pwr and essex um they've got great like recovery facilities so they've got like um hydroboric chamber so you basically like 100 percent oxygen mask with like compression like on a plane so like your ears pop and stuff and you sit in there for like an hour and a half and it's like equivalent to like a day sleep so it makes oh, okay. speeds up recovery ice baths infrared saunas stops inflammation um, saunas um, and that's that's it really so I down there like I'm down there three times a week and then obviously I could use the recovery facilities uh, also like compression boots like squeeze the lactic acid oh, hey, get all this, like, so you don't get cramps and stuff yeah um, but mainly like your recovery is your food and sleep like the main things for recovery you're keeping your body like in top condition I believe is your food and make sure you always have eight hours yeah. of sleep see i was gonna say because a lot of like a lot of the time you see that like, get up early don't need too much sleep like all that yeah. motivation stuff but is it like do you, do you need your eight hours i need my eight hours i'm body. there i'm in bed at half nine yeah. at night i go aim to go sleep at 10 10 a.m um, 10 p.m and then i wake up five five yeah and then yeah. what so what is your day like from getting up at five bright and early how does your yeah. week pan out um what day in your life you're doing so to like go to bed at 10, I wake up at 5.30, 6. Um, I have different training time, different training days. So three times a week I'll run. Um, on the running days, I'll run and then have my breakfast after. So like fasted cardio? Fasted cardio. On the days that are like strength and conditioning days, I'll eat before I go. Um, I have strength and conditioning like 8.30 in the morning. So then I'll have breakfast, go there, 8.30 train, and I come back, eat, and then whatever training I've got later on. Um, I always train twice a day, Tuesday, Thursdays, three times a day. Um, so that's it, like 6 a.m. I'm up, take, and I'm like, I'll get up quite quick. Yeah. Like I don't like to lounge around and like, as soon as my alarm goes off, bam, I'm up. You're a I shower, yeah. I shower. But I think the cold showers is like, it puts your body straight into shock, like you're awake then, do you yeah. know what I mean? You and can't then, really be asleep, <laughs> can you? Um, yeah, cold shower, and then I go, and then yeah, make my food or go out to run. If I'm running, obviously I'll run, come back and shower. Yeah. You were saying you always had like the competitive streak, and you'd like you like you saying you you wanted to beat the burpees, you wanted to like yeah. go. Like, even when we were out there and you were training, you were like doing a hundred, and everyone like no one was telling you to do a hundred of the kicks, but you was like that's what I want to do because that's yeah. like, your your decision. You were pushing yourself. Have you always had that? Like, or is that something that's... It kind of grew in me. Yeah. Like, when I was younger, if Saab told me to do 10 kicks, I was like, oh, Saab. Like, <laughs> or Paolo, like, Paolo, I told you as well, like, I used to be the laziest little boy ever. Like, um, But, like, that hunger grows in me. Like, my opponent, like, I, I believe, like, I need to do more than him. Like, whatever he's doing, I need to do more. Because, yeah. like, hard work always beats talent. So even if he was a better fighter than me, like my hard work, my dedication will out, out, out beat him. Like you can't out hustle your opponent. Yeah. No, yeah. If you can walk in that room and say no one's worked harder than you, then yeah. you can't. And is that all aspects of life? Have you always been like that? Like uh, not with school. No. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's just like training. Um, even like when you're out with the boys and that, and mm. like so, like little things like when you're doing keep ups. And like, is it always is that everything? For I you couldn't. I couldn't do a keep up to oh, save no. my life. <laughs> I let anyone yeah. win at that. <laughs> Well, uh, and did you always know then you wanted to be like you said you kind of got more into it at 15 when you was growing up as a kid what did you want to do and that like, was fighting always kind of an option um or? do you know like my dad like he used to do like a bit of mma training yeah. like but it's like brazilian jiu-jitsu and stuff and like um he used to do it with, like a few mma boys and stuff and like when i used to see him like training when i was like younger like i used to play football or played in goal um 
I used to think like, oh, I want to do that. That's like quite cool, like, because cage fighting when I was a kid, like, it was like just a new thing, like. Yeah, it's, it's quite. Yeah. It's obviously it's a relatively new sport, isn't it? Yeah. It's like from being seen as like that barbaric, just like mm. scrapping. It yeah, was yeah. like the first UFC, like when it first came out, no one really knew what how to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's become obviously a lot more established. Yeah. So yeah. So like he was doing that, and I was like, oh yeah, that's cool, like, because usually like. You rather have a boxer or you have a footballer, like in school, like yeah. that's the only two things. But cage fighting's like cool, like. And then I wanted to do cage fighting, but um, at the time you had to be like sixteen to compete, or like a certain age. That like, I weren't, I weren't at that age that you can compete at it. Even some gyms wouldn't let you do like. Yeah, like, like training and stuff. Too, yeah. So the next best thing was Thai boxing because it has all the like, the all, yeah, all the striking, striking yeah. stuff standing up and like. To be honest, I'm quite claustrophobic. So like someone laying on me and me feeling not in control makes me like kind of panic. So like, like it was the perfect sport for me, but I was just lazy. Like I was just fat, I was, couldn't be bothered to train. Like, and it's also like, I think what you eat is like a big impact on like your, like your training. Like, so I'd eat like shit and then I'd train like shit. I can't and be bothered to train. Like, and feel, feel like, like shit, shit as well, yeah. Cause you haven't got the white yeah. stuff in your body. Like honestly, if I had a packet of crisps before I can't train it, I wouldn't train. Like, I'll be 20% of when I train. Like, it's just, like, whatever you put in your body, like, you, your output. Like, you wouldn't put shit petrol in your car and expect it to run like... Yeah, it makes me feel bad. <laughs> before we come in, I'm a little bit techy. Um, on, I was going to actually ask, is the MMA something you'd want to go into then, or is that just... Because mm. a lot of the best, like, MMA fighters have come from these, like, a Muay Thai background. Yeah. Because, like, it is the best for striking. Yeah, yeah. Um rather than boxing or whatever because it uses like uses a lot more and, and kicks are so much more important in MMA yeah um, so is that something you'd want to go into or do you know people like within the Muay Thai like boys you speak to and that is that something any of them want to do do you know I think the main like main people from like Thai boxing that transitioned to like the MMA was for a paycheck yeah like um, like but most people know like Thai boxing is not going to make you rich but then like you look at Conor McGregor and stuff like that look at like the money they've accumulated like there's no Thai boxer that's got a quarter of what he's got yeah because even like that until he was like obviously stuck off being a Thai fighter yeah. wasn't he and he's gone over up. so I think it's mainly for the paycheck but yeah. like for me like one championship's like growing like quite quite rapid and like they're giving good paychecks like they're giving like 50 grand bonuses and that yeah they made a big mm. point about that wasn't it because it was like, yeah. um, there's obviously been all the controversy with UFC pay yeah, even yeah. though people see like McGregor earning like millions and millions yeah people aren't even getting like, anything on that when they're fighting at the bottom so it's good yeah. to see the ones that um got like a set pay and it's also like it's it's also given to our boxers like be- better yeah. recognition like looking after the fighters and stuff so more re- if you yeah. are that good tie boxer you've got more reason to stay than yeah you before. look at like the top tires like they'll go get like a grand or something in the stadiums yeah and they're gonna go get 20 grands gonna fight in one like just look what they're yeah, doing yeah. and they're having a fight like every couple of weeks just to kind of keep that keep that payroll in um when one championship is giving you that the way to like actually make a decent money, money yeah. and live off just fighting because most type boxers like you'd look um when i was younger like rob story used to train like at kettles and he'll have obviously like he was like three-time world champion started at 28 but he used to work a normal job yeah because you couldn't have couldn't, the money in it yeah either. So like he'll have to work a normal job. He was an electrician, and then he'll come and train like, and like that's the sort of level. Like now, I think it's evolved. When the more money's coming into it, it's evolving. Like you got people like myself, Jonathan, that literally just train. Yeah. Like we ain't having to go work. Literally, this is our life. And do you think it was like people like Liam Harrison who like? Do you think the the work they did for you like did they pave the way? Because like it wasn't like say 10, 15 years ago, no one was making any money. Yeah. So, do you think that like British fighters have helped in that sense, or do you think it's think just inevitably going to come? I think for British fighters, is like we're the fighters that people want to see. Like you look at Liam Harrison, like aggressive style, like he wants to knock people out. Where yeah. some ties will just play the game, and like from an outside like point of view, like when people are watching fights, they want to see knockouts. Yeah. Like what like Liam Harrison goes to do, or, like what Jonathan goes to do to go to take people's heads off. So. I think it's like pave the way like and give more of an impact like people like normal people like I've got friends that like normal friends that will ask me about like oh do you know like Liam Harrison or do you know Jonathan that um 
didn't know about fighting before, but it's obviously like it's growing. More, yeah. And like they follow him on Instagram, like normal people that work nine to fives know about Jonathan or know about Liam, and they they'll constantly ask, and like, oh, he's good. Or now they're coming to me and asking me about fighters. I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> yeah. So do you know Liam then? At all? Um, I've, I've trained with him. I trained with him recently, like last week. Obviously, Liam's a big name in like UK Muay Thai, so everyone kind of knows him. But um. I went to train with him, I spied with him, hit pads with him. But like, yeah, see, I would hate, to, I'd hate to spy with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're a brave man. Um, because is it seen as uh, is the UK seen as the second then after Thailand? Like, I'd personally say like, obviously, if you go at an interview with a Spanish guy, he'll probably say he's yeah. them. You say French guy, he'll say them. But I'd say it'd be Thailand, Thailand and UK. But if you see like, UK fighters are like doing a lot of top ties in. Yeah. Because um, like Jonathan, they were talking about him being like the best prospect outside of Thailand. Yeah. Like the best fighter outside of Thailand. So is that the standard then? It's Thailand and then the rest say, of the world, yeah. Yeah. Us for that. Yeah, like if you look at like WBC rankings, mainly like top 10s, like 80% of them are Thais. Unless when you're going like 75 kilos above, because Thais don't even oh, yeah, they don't really get that big. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah, then they lose it all. Um, <laughs> what's your. What, like. Where do you see yourself in five years then? Because yeah. you'll be like what, 28. Is that, the, is that the peak? Or when, when does a fight in age like, um, it's all It's all different. Like, um, Depends how well like you look after yourself. Yeah. Well, you obviously, yeah. like, say you're keeping up this kind of fitness and this kind of yeah. level of like, not abusing your body, like some people do. How, um, yeah, is there like a time is too far or? Um, I just feel like I'd keep it up for as long as I can because um, obviously I, en I enjoy fights like that's my thrill and um, obviously I want to do as much fights early on so I can like enjoy the rest of my life I ain't gonna yeah. want to be doing getting kicked in my face at 45 yeah. so <laughs> but like, for, like in like say 10 years time 33 is that old for a fighter or is that like for instance that Rob Story he started at 28 I think he retired at 37 three time world champion alright so, so this year um, like generally like the living age is like getting up so like like usually like you say like your prime is 20 to 30 but like it's actually getting a bit up like it's in the 30s now because now we've got yeah. like, improvements in like recovery and training yeah and, and stuff like, like that so you're seeing that. athletes go to longer ages and still competing at higher levels yeah, just like they're doing with football and all the other sports yeah. aren't they like that it's just getting a bit better like people's primes are going up because obviously your prime's not like we're living to like 80, 90, your prime's still not going to be 20, 30, it's going to go up a little yeah. bit. And what's the goal for you? Like what, where would you be happy? You know, like, have you got a like, um, um, what do they call it? Not on the wall, like a vision board. <laughs> have you got anything like that? Does that kind of keep you focused or is it just um, I'm like, the belt that keeps you focused? Do you know, like mine's like opponent at a time. So like, so, Obviously, my aim is, like, at the moment, my short-term aim is, like, one championship. And then, like, once you're in one championship, I think you kind of aim for, like, get the belt and be, like, number one in one championship. But, like, at the moment, mine's, like, I need to beat John O'Chip Chase. Yeah. Then I'll look, we'll spit, sit down with Paolo and be like, oh, who's next to, like, get me to that next goal of one championship? So we'll look at another opponent above John O'Chip Chase and fight, and then I, that's my goal. That's my short-term goal. And then keep on building like that. So like every step as it comes, yeah. like one fight at a time, fight at a time. Yeah. Than... I don't look like far this, like obviously I have the end goal, like one championship and have the belt, but it's at the moment it feels like a bit, a bit too distant to like set my goals on that. Yeah, it's a bit, yeah. It's too, and I don't want to look to... over like my opponents now. So like I kind of just stay focused on like, yeah, I need to beat Jono and then we'll look after him. Yeah. Like I don't like, like, I know that I've got Stevie like booked in, for this year but it's not a fight that we talk about because you still want this one yeah, to come yeah so you don't want to go above and are you going to stick it this way or are you going to move up and just how, how you grow as a person like? um like i said i'll make 59 kilos like i don't have to cut water nothing like i eat on a day of the way and so i can make 57 um it's just what fights available yeah, yeah available like if there's a bigger fight a big chance at 57 i'll make it there's an even bigger chance at 55, I might so what, is consider it, taking is it. Is it 55, 7, 9, and 60? Is it go up in twos? Yeah, it's 55.4. Yeah, 
57.1 I think 59 I think maybe bang on then it's like 61 63 and a half 65 so it goes up oh 55 is below it's 53 and a half that's when you get really light though isn't it? Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, you I'm not making that <laughs> yeah that would just be too much in your body wouldn't it oh, I, I don't think physically my body will get down there like my body, um, my body's got, I think, cause I have like nutritionists and stuff. So he measures like my fat and stuff like that. I think my body lean is like 50, I think without losing water, I could get to like 58 kilos. Anything less than that, I'd have to lose water yeah. or I'd have to start sacrificing muscle. Yeah. And what is your, what's your body fat percentage then? At fight day? No, all like even like now. Or now it's like 9%. Yeah. Fight yeah. days like four. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> like, do you see yourself as like, particularly like, big and ripped for your weight, or is that not? Um. Or because like some fighters are like big bruises, isn't it? Like, are you more? Yeah. You rather keep that slim build so you can move. I don't really look at my build. I look at like how I feel. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I fight at a low weight, so I'm always going to be like quite slim. Yeah. Quite ripped at the weight. Um. Like. I if I didn't feel like slim and like couldn't see my abs, I probably would mentally like get to me. But um, yeah, like I mainly just go on like what how I feel. Yeah. Um, like when I've got like I don't know five kilos left and I still got like I could still pinch skin. I feel like confident because obviously I've got weight that I can lose easy. Um, it's like when you've got nothing on you, you got like five kilos to yeah, lose. You're like, there's oh. nowhere to lose. <laughs> yeah. And how long do you start thinking before fight then about your because obviously you put the fight in and when do you start thinking right now's when the, the weight is important because you're saying like your training camp is about eight weeks yeah but do you focus on weight before that and then the eight weeks is technical no or how does it split? so i do like eight weeks because like your body goes into like a shock so i do like six weeks hard right. eight weeks like just to pick up the training so like if i'm not in camp i'll coast like i'll train once or twice a day um six day, five days a week um have my weekends to break um so then two weeks would be like just my body getting used to training back twice three times a day right okay. i have two weeks and six weeks is blitzing hard 100 kicks at the end of sessions 100 kicks at the start um 10 tens were like going hard um and then my weight depends on my weight depends what i'm walking around at like yeah. I always tell my like tell myself like I'm gonna stay between this, but then like I kind of get to that weight and I think I can have a couple more meals and then like it kind of goes up creeps up, but like relatively like this camp I was stuck at like sixty five kilos, I think when I started the camp. And you're fighting at what fifty nine? Fifty nine, so like six, six kilos, but that's not a lot like considering like I was having Nando's last week, so when my training picks up you naturally lose weight and then as soon as I go on a diet like, it kind of falls off me yeah, so these for next four weeks are going to be they're going to be intense man. yeah so like the more my training picks up the more I lose weight and then once I start eating completely clean um because like some people think like Nando's is like quite clean like, eating yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> but it's like the sauce is the salt and stuff like that makes chips. you hold water no nah, no chips no what do you, <laughs> you get in Nando's then I'd get I'd get uh half chicken rice and I'll still get like broccoli stems. So maybe coleslaw is it? Coleslaw I'm feeling. I can't read it. <laughs> a bottled water. No, tap, no, you can't. Don't get the tap water glass and get free coke. No, I don't drink fizzy. No, nothing at all. I don't drink fizzy. Um, I might have a fizzy like out of camp, but 12 weeks before fight because the gas gives me stitches. Yeah. Because yeah, we're training that much, you can't put anything like that in it. Anyway. Yeah, I can't have a fizzy. Like, if I had a fizzy drink, I can't train. No. Like, my pal George, like, he comes and has cans of coke I don't know how he does it straight after training bam on a can of coke I think mate I think I'll be sick so is it all um, do you drink water then or do you not like because you don't um, drink booze is it just water and like or juice right or yeah at one point like I said I got addicted first now I was addicted to Capri Suns <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing there's worse things to be addicted to <laughs> Capri Suns and Rocky Bars yeah. oh they go off that <laughs> Not a bad little combo if you're going to be addicted to something. <laughs> and you're working it all off anyway, so it's not too yeah. bad. No, I don't have it in the camp, but wait, like, I remember when I was away, like, you get Rocky Bars and a canteen sheet, and like, on a Friday, I'd be like craving, like, <laughs> <laughs> ripping them open. 
And what did um, what did you learn like from being inside? Like, did you you learn anything about the way the world? Because like, obviously, people in there have been away for a long time. Some of them, mate. You know, as like, well, different, like different lifestyles and different cultures. You meet people that you'll never meet. Yeah. Shall we? Like, <laughs> as you find people from like different like random backgrounds, like. And like some people you look at and think like you what are you doing here and like it's crazy like you people that would never never meet on the outside yeah and like different backgrounds like obviously there's people that have been there a long time different crimes and like yeah did you see any people in there with like potential like yourself that have kind of got themselves in trouble and have wasted that did that did you see any of that and did that motivate you to like okay no I'm not throwing away what I've got uh, do you know what I've met um, a footballer from Brighton yeah he paid for Brighton and he was in there for armed robbery I thought what are you doing yeah like it's not like my sport like you're doing armed robbery and because there's a lack of money in the sport and like you're just getting your career off the ground it's like yeah, you're just about to make yeah. big checks like every week and yeah he's playing for Brighton um, obviously there's like a lot of rappers in there um, yeah, it's coming from Croydon as well. Like, how how did that all affect you growing up? Like the whole music scene. Like, there's obviously a lot going on in Croydon. Yeah. Um, music wise, and that was that something that motivated you a little bit. Like, did you see all these people thinking I can maybe not make music, but I can like, <laughs> I can do like I can be somebody and like I can kind of like because it's all, it's quite an equivalent lifestyle. Isn't it? Apart from the fact that they can go out partying every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They be like. The fact that you're not necessarily doing a nine to five, you've got a bit of recognition, you've got like you're self employed to an extent. Yeah, did yeah. you see that growing up, like Krypton Clone and all that stuff? Did that inspire you? Um, do you know what? Probably didn't like see it as like, um, it's hard to say, like, because I wouldn't put them to like rapping and like fighting. So, like, I'd look at like fighters, like, I used to like watching like Mayweather and stuff, yeah, and then like, obviously, like, I used to like music and stuff so like I wouldn't put them as like comparing them to give me like drive like I used to like look at bigger drives like Mayweather or like yeah. people like in the same sector of like what I do um, I just meant more like someone from your area who's like kind of mad yeah um, yeah I guess so, like putting your area on the map like it's quite quite it's like quite like proud thing to do like if I if I made it to like massive and stuff like I'd always like support my support um my area that I'm from like where I'm like I'll never forget where I'm from. Yeah, it shaped you doesn't it an area where you grew up. Yeah like, yeah yeah of course. It always makes you see the world differently, doesn't it? So and as that lone wolf like life and mentality that you have to have as a fighter, has that changed you? Has that like and obviously the re the reason I wanted to interview you originally is because like you're a world champion, there's a different yeah. mindset of people who are world champions to, Yeah like, yeah like me so I I'm, you have to be a certain level of dedicated and a certain level of just a bit you have to be a bit crazy to want to do what you're doing to like, <laughs> you have to, to get to, to stand there and go I enjoy getting punched in the face and elbows and that like, I saw you training I would not want to take any of that as a world champion you've got you're, you're also a world champion in the sport where you're on your own yeah does it freak you out like that there's no one that like, you have this support unit but yeah it's all on your shoulders like the success of it at the end of the day does that affect you mentally uh i wouldn't say it affects me mentally because that's like um like i still have the support and that like i quite like my own company yeah and stuff like obviously i have my dad that checks up on me like now he doesn't have to check up on me like he used to, when i was like 17 18 he'd ring me up and have you gone running? Have you done this? Have you done... Or not, better still, like, he used to... So, when I stay at my mum's, it's, like, in New Addington, um, and then he used to go to a gym in, like, Pearly Way, which is, like, just under 10 miles, and my dad would drive there in the morning and then make me run from Addington to his gym and then would drive back and then drop me back home. And, like, if he's not doing that, he's ringing me up, have you gone training? And then I didn't... I got my licence at, like, just when I got out, so 23 yeah. years old. So my dad's been doing all the driving about for all my training. Yeah, because he was saying, he's like, he's like, thank God he's actually got his own car. But, <laughs> but he was even more, so he was still down here. Like, yeah. He was still down here, even though he didn't need to be dropping yeah. you off. He was down here to support and watch. Yeah, like, he likes to check in and, like, make sure I'm training. Like, 
because I think that's like his proud dad moment. Yeah. Um, like obviously, he, well, he's got nine kids, but. Oh, so you've got a lot of yes. Yeah, so <laughs> how how does that work then with your fan like with all your siblings and that? Are they are any of them else fighting? Any of my them? brother does boxing. Like he's just started boxing. Enough. Like back in the day, like when he was a kid, he um. He he was like really good. Um, he's quite big for his like he's quite big for his age. But then he stopped. Not like you then. Yeah. <laughs> um, then he stopped. I think he like started kind of clubbing and started enjoying himself a little bit, and then like he started boxing again. Now he's had one fight, um, nothing like too serious, but like he trains every day. So I'm the like, main fighter out of the family. So for my dad, like he used to have like a background in like he used to do cage fighting. Yeah. Um, the guys like he'll ring me on a Friday, be like, "One championships on." I'm like, "I'm bad. I'm training. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to do about it?" It's good that he's involved. I right? like it's better that he's involved like that. So I think like yeah. So for him like this this is like he's proud dad moment. Like this is what exactly what he'd want one of his kids to do, yeah. and like this is what he's got an interest. Like one of my sisters works in a school. He's not gonna like go to the school and watch her but work like. Yeah. See, it's, a, it's it was it was nice though. It was good to see like that. He, you could tell he was like so because I, I said um I didn't know he was your dad. And yeah. I, said, I was like oh he's red hot in here. Like, I'm watching you and he was like yeah, he's my son. And, like, <laughs> and, like the theme on his face, he was like he was proud. He was a proper proud yeah, dad yeah. to see to see you doing that. And you're only training. You're like, not even actually fighting. Like, yeah. So it was, it was good to see. And like, he's got the same like he's got a mad determination. If yeah. you see like the shape of him, he's got abs. He's in the gym two hours a day. Like he's got like a mad mindset as well. Like, mate, the fella is fifty three years old. He can do fifty pull ups one hit. I don't know any fifty three year old that can do that. Still benches under sixty kilos. So yeah, so you need <laughs> that past that dedication. Of my Just to didn't give me his um um what's it called? metabolism. Never yeah. give me that because he'll go eat chips and chicken straight after training. <laughs> and have a six pack. Still look good. Yeah, still got about five percent body fat. <laughs> if only, if only we could all do that. Um. So your dad's obviously been quite um, important in your life. Yeah. And what are the virtues that you would say you admire most in a person? Like, and whether that's from from your family, you've picked these up, or from just life and the battles you've been through, both like in the ring and outside. What, what kind of virtues would you admire most in a person? Uh, loyalty. Yeah. Loyalty. Um, obviously. Um, like if you put it into fighting, like I have loyal people that come watch me. Could like generally on my health, like um, how's my training and stuff. Like I've had friends that have done weight cuts with me, and that like um, just to just to be there is just to be support? there. Yeah, like one of my like one of my old friends. Uh, I went. Up, I was actually away with him. Um, he used to come to every one of my weight cuts, and he'll come in a sauna with me yeah. <laughs> to to cut weight with me. And then when I'm half dead, laying on the floor, he was like make me pick me up it'll run cold water over my head um got another friend that come to spain with me to wake up so like the loyalty and like the support like in a person like helped as really well really makes a difference yeah. doesn't it? it really does because like. my dad like when it comes to that stuff he's like he winds me up i've weight cut before and he's got like a, a big baguette and he's asking me to hold it while he drives i'm looking at him like I haven't ate for two days. Like, oh, yeah. like rubbing it in Because <laughs> a lot of people, um, they, like, fighters in particular, have a great relationship with their dad, but yeah. never train with their dad because he's yeah. too close and too personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does your dad ever, do you ever train with him or is it you, you keep it distance? Um, so his training is like quite a lot different. So like he doesn't fight train no more. He does like a lot of weights, uh, like, a lot of cardio weight, so it's like completely different sector of what I'll do. Yeah. Um. When I'm out of camp, like I go down the gym, spend like a cup because he's a, that's all he does. Yeah. Goes to the gym for, for two, three hours a day. So like I will spend some time, like I'll go to the gym, do his workouts. Won't be able to walk for about a week, but <laughs> um, um, yeah. So I like, kind of I do some training with him. Obviously, like sometimes he comes down, and he's like quite a talker to first, and sometimes sometimes I have to tell him like shut up. And closer to like weigh-ins and that, I'll be like, we kind of clash because yeah. I'm hungry. I'm kind of snappy. Intense, yeah, 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 yeah. And those co- that people who are closest to you as well, they're yeah, like, you always you start, yeah, start stressing with each other. Um, and what is, what's like a sin you're willing to forgive in people? Like if some, yeah, like what are you willing to forgive? Um, see me like I'm too like I'm kind. 
I'm too kind to people. Like I forgive, like for near enough. Every, like I, people, like my friends, tell me and stuff. Like I should be like more harsh and stuff. Um, mate, to be honest, like with good re like explanation and stuff. Obviously, like there's boundaries of like what I wouldn't forgive, but like I'll basically forgive it. Like yeah. most things. You did. Mm. That was a reason. If, yeah. If you understand that. The yeah. If I understand and it, yeah. stuff. Yeah. And obviously, like. If I feel like you, it's actually genuine and it's not, um, you're gonna change or something like whatever you done, like it's got, it's not gonna happen in the future. Then, yes, you can always like yeah. look at if the if the intent and the morals are pure, you don't necessarily mind someone yeah. the action. Yeah, yeah. Good. And when um, when you're having these fights, we spoke about at the very start. Um, they were like back and he's like back and forth on social media and all yeah. that stuff. And then when you were fighting in Thailand, it was just sit next to each other getting a massage there's no mm -hmm. animosity it was just about being yeah, free yeah. what what do you prefer and does that like back and forth we were saying but you focus just solely on your next fight does that back and forth and arguments and as much as selling a fight yeah. does that motivate you or would you rather just be keep it civil and just get on with the fight to be honest like obviously other fighters have like um, different aspects of how they hype a fight, how they get ready for a fight. Um, I don't take it away from any fighter. Uh, for me, I don't really care what you do. Um, I'm in the gym grafting every single day. That's what I'm gonna do to win the fight. Um, talking on the internet, um, uploading photos of people, whatever you wanna say doesn't win you a fight. Yeah, in the day it's all just It's, it's in the ring. Yeah. That, them, fr them five three minute rounds is what What's what's gonna prove all of that on the internet is gonna be forgotten about when we're in that ring. Yeah, yeah, and after it's not gonna. Matter. Like obviously, like the back and forth, like he's like called me out talking on the internet. I'm gonna reply, but um, yeah, like back when we had the back and forth, the fight wasn't even on, yeah. wasn't even confirmed. Like obviously, he got what he wanted. He got the fight that he wanted by that back and forth. So obviously, it works in an aspect. But since then, tunnel vision. Come to take his head off. Yeah, you haven't got time. Yeah. All that, and that's good. But right, well, um, I think was there was anything else you wanted to run through. We all good. Mm, we all good. Right, well, then good luck on the night of April. Where Cheers are mate. you fighting? And the tickets available or anything like that? Yeah, tickets available. Um, I'm fighting Multi Mayhem K2, um, Center in Crawley. Um, tickets available. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be a good night. I've uh, got me on. Uh, George Jarvis that I train with at Lupini. Sid Claudel, and there'll be many more. Um, George Hart, he's another hot one from out there as well, isn't he? Yeah, really good. Him. Yeah. It's a lot of his videos of like him training and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's fighting for a WBC world title. Don't really get any bigger than that. No. And yeah. Yeah, so what um what are the rack that you've got the one championship and then what is it WBC? Um, do you know like the easiest way to explain so like for instance there's different belts. Um so I've got the ISK world title. There's also like WBC, there's a WMO world title, there's like, there's loads of world titles. Um, so the WBC, I'd say is like the best Pinnacle. world title to have. Uh, then I'd say like ISKA, w, w, um, w, I don't know, loose count, there's so many, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Um, then they're the belts to have, and then obviously one championship, and then the one championship belt. And you're fighting of. for a WBC British title. British title on the night. Yeah. And George fighting for the world title. World title. Well. But um yeah, so George has gone down a different set like, I went climbed the ISKA rankings, so I was able to fight for the world title. George has climbed the WBC rankings, so he's able to fight for the WBC world title. Right, so you've got to then follow in that path. That path. So um you have to apply of what belt you can fight for that you're eligible to fight for. So when we applied they said you can fight for the British title. And then after that, you go into the WBC rankings, then you can go for a European or international. Then you do that, then you can go to the world. You have to be top 10 ranked in the world to fight for the world title. Oh, brilliant. I've got to go home. <laughs> so we're literally going to be like five minutes. Uh, we're oh, yeah, we're literally yeah. wrapping it up from that. Fuck's sake. <laughs> Sol, can you turn the light off, please? <laughs> um, right, yeah, so you've got... Um, the I so you're fighting you've got the ISKA and now you're gonna try and work your way up the WBC, WBC rankings. rankings. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Right, well good luck. Thank you. Um we'll try and get there and film some back 
back safe stuff as yeah. well and we'll get some more because we've got the footage and we'll get that out as well yeah ready for the fight <laughs> and we're gonna bring it home aren't we, right, we Dylan, thank you so very much, mate. Take, thanks well, for having me